Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cornelia Stephanie Show. It's Friday today, and it is our Series of Hope series today. And I'm super excited to introduce you to our first guest. Christine Gold is a highly rated motivational speaker with eight plus years of experience as a woman's coach and facilitator. Christine works with groups, individuals, and organizations to amplify their authenticity and empower them to become a better version of themselves. Christine is also the host of Heart Led Soul Fed podcast, as well as a psychic medium, speaker, author, coach, pet nomad, course creator, healer, and podcast host. Welcome to the show today, Christine Gold. Oh, thank you, Cornelia, Stephanie. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, it's wonderful to have you here. So just before we were going live today, you and I were talking a little bit in the back room, in the green room, about what got you started on this journey. How did you get started doing this line of work that you're now teaching and helping others so that they can become a better version of themselves because you weren't always doing this, but something led you uh, down this path and now you're doing this incredible healing work. How did you, how, where did you find yourself? Oh gosh, uh, I would say uh, even as a child, I was a BS meter. I would read people's energy and animals and I had this beautiful, we still have this beautiful relationship, but it really started uh, 2017, Dark Night of the Soul spiritual two by four the head as I like to call it I love infusing humor and a lot of things I do I was stressed depressed anxious and two attempts to die by suicide I am an open book when it comes to what happened to me and I've tried everything years of counseling I've tried every diet I've tried every fad I've tried medication I tried it all until I saw a video on YouTube and that was my mentor at the time. I didn't know, but she basically said, your intuition is shut down. You are not living your soul's purpose. And I thought, no one has ever said that to me. So she also offered a six-month certification as a medium. So I took the leap. And, you know, through years and hundreds of readings, healings, and mentorships. Here I am. So you've been doing this work now since 2017. And you know, the dark night of the soul, what does that entail? Dark night of the soul is so many things. But basically, you have lost your zest for life, life has no meaning anymore. And you start questioning, why am I here? Who am I? Everything around you just doesn't resonate anymore. People, places and things. And you also, of course, have anxiety, you might have depression, you might have uh, multiple addictions. I mean, that is how many of us who are empathic and sensitive, that's how we cope. Those are coping mechanisms, because we have no other tools, we have no other ways to sustain our energy. And we tend to be people pleasers, codependent, and perfectionists. Right, right. So uh, would you say that having your dark night of the soul, having, you know, because you talked about two suicide attempts, would you say that um, the suicide attempts were really all about you stepping into your soul's purpose, stepping into your soul's, uh, on your soul's path? Would you say that those attempts were about that or would you say that the suicide attempts were about path trauma from the past and really just not um, 
feeling like there was a way out? A uh, little bit of both. However, um, those, you know, you, you basically have to go through the dark to find the light. And many of us are going through that right now, or we have been going through multiple. I mean, just everything in the, in the earth is changing. You want to talk about new earth. You want to talk about the golden age of Aquarius. Some might find it a little too woo, but I say don't poo poo the woo woo because we have been for forever and people choosing spirituality last when it should be first. Is that what happened to you in your, and when you said you, you were before 2017, you were doing everything instead of choosing spirituality first? Absolutely. The, the partying, the drinking, the eating, the smoking, uh, the workaholic tendencies, even making six figures, having that, you know, on the outside looking in, wow, a perfect life. No, it wasn't. It's, it was, it was a sham. It's a farce. It was an ego based life. Yeah. And so it takes it takes a lot of courage to be willing to face those shadows and to face those wounds from the past and to realign your life with your soul and and live your life on purpose. You know, there's a clearing out process. That's why having someone like you, having a coach, having a mentor, having someone to uh you know, support you through the process is so helpful. So what are you doing nowadays to support people on this path? I try to share as much information as I can. If I learn something, I like to share it. And then, you know, that really sparks conversation. So really it's, I'm building a community as well, because, you know, we cannot do this alone. <laughs> the, the lone wolf, you know, I can do, no, it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, we are so disconnected. We actually need to reconnect with each other and realize that we are all one. There is no separation. There is no fear. And if there is, what would love do? So it's an easy flip. Uh, whether I'm sharing it through a blog or a video, or we're meeting in our community once a month. Um, I have a lot of free resources. In fact, I have over 550 pieces of content on YouTube alone. So there's a ton of information out there. And really, it's about being accountable, being responsible, and turning everything inside, looking inside, because that you have to look inside in order to realize that the outside is an illusion, always has been. You just forgot who you are. You just forgot. That's it. If you can laugh and go, oops, which I, I tend to, you know, teach others to do. I mean, we are human beings. We are not doings. So living life from the inside out, uh, that is that is our new earth, that is our new way of living, and because we're living into uh, our true heart's desire, our true purpose, so from the inside out, not from the outside in, where we are always looking outside of ourselves to find uh, purpose, to find validation, to find approval, all the things, but it's actually our own approval, our own uh, inner self expressed outward and listening to what it is that our intuition is guiding us to live and do. So you also mentioned that, uh, what was the stat about how many, um, what was the stat about people being empaths? Oh, 20% of the population. 20. Empath, sensitive, INF, J, whatever those terms, labels are that you identify with. Absolutely. And um, I, I talk about the clairs, you know, many of us think that, you know, there's only clairvoyance or clairsentience, there's actually eight. And clair empathy is is the big one. And that's the one that empaths most identify with. Yeah. And so a lot of people that are empaths, they probably don't even know that they're empaths. So give us a uh, you know, for the person that's tuning in and listening to the first time and wondering if they're an empath, what does that mean? That means you feel everything. You walk into a room and 
sometimes I'm like, you know, you're just a target on one person. You're like, what is going on over there? And you're so drawn. And then, and it's about being around certain people as well. Do you feel better around them or worse? That, that is another big indication that you're empathic, that you're picking up on people's vibrations, on their energy. But here's the problem. You take it home with you. It manifests as disease because you, we tend to want to want to help and save everyone. And you cannot, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first, lots of self care, lots of self love, lots of healing. Um, and, and healing is a, is a spiral up. And I don't like the term, you know, peeling back the onion. I'm not an onion. In fact, we're all perfect children of God. God did not make a mistake when God made you and you are unique and you're here for a reason. So, and, and learning, you know, about boundaries, that's the biggest one boundaries. When you're an empath learning and no is a complete sentence. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, I love uh, using the boundaries as a tool and a lot of times using the boundaries first with yourself. Uh, you know, really being able to identify what those boundaries are for yourself, what you will and will not uh, tolerate or allow in your world on your watch where you need to enforce the boundaries. And a lot of times it even means putting up the boundary with your own ego. So I love that you brought the boundary piece up because it's a, a it's a really important tool uh, in this in this lifetime on our spiritual journey is to use those tools, use the boundaries as empaths, because so many of us are empathic. And we, like you said, we take on the emotions, we take on things from other people and didn't even realize that we did. So that spiritual hygiene work, you know, clearing your energy field is so important. Well, I just want to let the people know uh, what, where they can find you, give us your social media handles. And uh, you did mention that you are launching something new. Maybe you can tell us about that in two minutes. Absolutely. Uh, you can find me at medium Christine gold, pretty easy across most platforms and launching a one year online course within our soul healers community. Um, everything started years ago at six weeks, but I've realized over the years that one year is where transformation truly, like when the rubber hits the road, there's no looking back. Yeah. And so, uh, is that the, the course that you were just mentioning, is that, uh, also on the social media handle that you just gave us? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Okay. Well, what do you want to leave us with in this, in this short one minute, uh, segment? What do you want to leave us with? Uh, what do you want to leave the audience with? I just want everyone to know, and maybe even if it's just one person that, uh, everyone has a purpose. It's not your job happiness, happiness. It is so simple. So where can you find your joy? Where can you find the moments of presence? And how can you fully express yourself as a beautiful being that you truly are? That sounds wonderful. Thank you so much, Christine Gold, for coming on the Cornelia Stephanie show. Thank you, Thank audience, you. for listening and tuning in. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm excited to introduce you to our next guest, Clint Callahan. He is a seasoned social worker and therapist who has been serving in the field since the year of 2000. During his over 23 year career, he has effectively aided thousands of professionals with beating burnout and improving their relationships. He has observed the profound positive changes in people's personal stories and lives. Uh, in, in their clients by observing their his clients by utilizing the small changes that people can make yet having a big impact and he calls that one percent per day and that's the transformational system he says it's about teaching people practical psychological to tools to beat burnout and stress in just 15 minutes a day clint's professional background is diversified and robust it spans business management, program design, team collaboration, along with crisis management, 
therapy and life coaching. Welcome to the show today, Clint. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, my goodness. So, you know, so many people nowadays are suffering from burnout. So not just from burnout in their careers, but just burned out literally from all the changes that are going on in life, you know, stepping onto their right path. You mentioned yes. uh, trauma, PTSD, all kinds of things. So what, um, what is it? What is the reason that you are so passionate about helping people in in this way to release the burnout? Sure. So the reason why I'm so passionate about helping people leave burnout is because I've been there. I've I went through that in about uh, in 2008 after the uh, the real estate market collapsed. I was doing real estate at that time, and so I lost everything, and that began my path of being burned out myself. I went back into therapy and back into social work, and I was working with a very chronically mentally ill, mentally, financially, physically um, debilitated population that led to my burnout. And so I really had to decide in that moment, who did I want to be as a husband and as a father and just as a practitioner, as being a therapist and life coach and those kind of things. And it led me to going back to figuring out how do I do that when I had two young kids that were newborns and a toddler. I didn't have, you know, hours a day to focus on myself. So I had to figure out a way to do it in a short amount of time, but also create change over time. Yeah, I can only imagine, you know, being a therapist and being a coach, a life coach, uh, you know, working on yourself because that that requires, I mean, as a mentor myself, as a coach myself, as an entrepreneur myself, if mm -hmm. I don't do my own work, if I don't keep my own uh, personal development moving forward and my connection, my inside connection with source, you know, keeping things pure and clean and aligned, uh, it it really does make a difference because that's that's the thing that was missing from the past, right? Is that yes. self-care, that, that whole practice. So you said that making the small steps uh, you know, well, first I want to say too, that, you know, again, you have small children. So, yeah. uh, not only, not only are you looking at your own, uh, personal development, but also being a father and a husband, and then you have your practice. So that's a lot to focus on, but really, when you think about it, the people out there that we're talking to, the people who mm -hmm. we're talking to, they have a lot going on too. Yeah. And how can we ask them to make those small steps, to take those small steps, right? That you're talking yes. about. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is that as you continue to go through this process and you recognize that it all starts with you because it always comes back to, you know, a dry well gives no water. So if you don't take care of yourself and prioritize yourself, then that's where the burnout actually begins. Because what people think burnout is, is, oh, it's just because I'm working too much. But like you mentioned, it's not just about work. It's actually a systemic collapse. It's a multidimensional collapse in various areas of your life. And it usually starts with about four different things that I, at least I noticed in my own life when I really started to get burned out is the first thing I did is I withdrew socially. I started to not have time for friends, not have time for hobbies, not have time for myself, for my own personal enjoyment or fulfillment. And then the next thing that happened to me is I started to neglect just my own self-care. You know, I'd wear the same clothes. I wouldn't shower as much. I didn't shave as much. I wouldn't go to the gym. I just started slacking off in that way. And then it, then that began to affect then my relationships because I began distancing myself from my family and from my friends and from, you know, my wife and from these different things because I didn't want them to see how burned out I was because I didn't want to be a burden because that's often the story that we tell ourselves is that other people are so busy too. I don't want to burden them with how I'm feeling. And then the last thing that started was I started to disengage from work. This is when I really started to get into trouble because now work started suffering. And when work started suffering, then my bosses started knowing and noticing. And then that almost made me lose my career and lose my job and lose everything that I've been working towards. And so it's a very insidious thing and in how it can infiltrate all aspects of your life. And it's recognizing that and that it's not just about I'm burned out at work. 
I was burned out at home. I was burned out with my kids. I was burned out as a husband. I was burned out as just being a human being every day. That's so vulnerable and so authentic what you shared. I really appreciate you sharing from this place because what came up for me when you were talking is, uh, you know, because when you were talking about how you were withdrawing from first from social, a little by little withdrawing more because the part of you that felt like you were a robot, like, mm -hmm. like you were the AI, like you were the robot that was showing up for all of these things, but you weren't fully, fully present because mm -hmm. you, um, you were missing in action. You were, you hadn't, you know, connected, um, yourself yeah. in, right. And, and that 100%. was, that was the part that was missing, but it was brilliant the way that you laid it out. You talked a little bit earlier about before we came live that you just, uh, published a book. It, yes. and it's about burnout what what is the title of the book yeah. do you have it right there so people can see it hold on once more i do awesome uh, hold it up called, and tell us the title yeah it's called beat burnout in 15 minutes a day how to prioritize yourself without losing what matters most so yeah. that I, I wrote this i've been writing this for about the last oh since i've been burned out this has been rolling around in my brain and I finally decided, no, I'm going to really codify this and crystallize this. And really what this is, is it's a combination of my journey and what I went through and the steps that I did to pull myself out of being burned out using all my therapeutic school, uh, skills and tools and um, you know meditation and journaling and all these different things. And it's a combination of story. And then at the end, there's also a link to my Google Drive where there's worksheets in it too. So you can either read the book and not do the worksheets, or you can read the book and do the worksheets. And I also offer a free 15 minute just consultation with me at any time when you're reading the book. If you have a question or a concern or you're trying to figure something out, you can schedule a call with me. I'm happy to talk with you about it because burnout is so prevalent and it is ever increasing at our sense of disconnection and our sense of frustration and not feeling like there's enough of us to go around and let's face it the covid pandemic enhanced it and made it so much worse because a piece of us all got lost during that time when we were disconnected from everybody because we now recognize that oh i can survive without other people but but is surviving thriving is it living and that's the question you have to ask yourself you can survive but do you really feel fulfilled in your life? Is that, are you getting what you want out of your life? Because at my most burned out, I was getting through the day. I showed up. I did all the stuff I was supposed to do. I acted as if everything was fine. And yet I wasn't there and it wasn't fulfilling. And I always felt at the end of the end of the night, in the middle of the night, waking up in that cold sweat going, what was the point of that day? There was no point. I'd lost my connection to me and to my purpose. And that's one of the things that I learned most is that purpose is so important. And yet we often drop it down in the priority list of our own self purpose. Yeah, this is really, you know, brilliant the way that you're laying it out, you can tell that you really moved through that transformed all of that and are living that now and created this wonderful book and tool to help others. Now, uh, where can people get your book? Is it on Amazon? Yes, it is on Amazon. You can look me up, Clint Callahan, uh, MSW, LCSW. There's no hyphens or periods. It's just that. And you can look it up under Beat Burnout in 15 Minutes a Day. It's there in print and also uh, Kindle as well. Great. And uh, so now, how is your purpose now? How are you living? What's your ideal? How? What is your ideal day now? Like, how are you yeah. living your day? Well, now it's, I own my, uh, I own my own practice. So I, I do therapy. I do therapy and I work for about seven hours a day. And I've just introduced it to introduced my life coaching course into the work that I'm doing as well. I get to spend more time with my kids. I get to be present for them in the different aspects of their life so that I can be there for them. I'm not just, I'm not just a father that shows up for the occasional thing. I'm there for all the different things that they do. I'm there for their soccer games. I'm able to have a flexible schedule. I'm able to do these things, but I'm also able to still do my purpose, which for me is I love seeing that light bulb moment for people 
when they finally go, wait a minute, I don't have to live my life this way. I can have a life of hope and fulfillment and joy and purpose. And my answer is yes. And the thing that people get wrong when they do goals, which is we were all trained this, is if you think about what you want at the top of the mountain and then work your way backwards, you'll get there. But the problem is, is I've done the top of the mountain thing. And when I got there, I was like, well, who do I want to be now that I'm here? And so I realized that a big piece of it is first, you have to know you. If you don't know you first, if you don't know everything good, everything bad, and everything neutral about yourself, you're going to keep finding yourself stuck in the same patterns again and again and again. And that leads to frustration, depression, anxiety, burnout, all of these different things that we call this, they're all part of everybody's life. Some yeah. of us are good at dealing with it. Most of us are just always dealing with it in one way or another, because we're just attempting to to do it, to get through the day, to get from the day. Yeah. And the more that you take that time to understand you, the more you can then connect with others because you now know yourself. And that's the most important thing that I learned through all this stuff. Yeah, and I can totally feel it coming from you. So thank you so much, Clint, for coming on and, and sharing this with us because I'm sure there's many people that feel burnt out and that feel like they're robots uh, just walking around feeling disconnected and certainly the tools that are out there, the mentors that are like you that are supporting people to you know, lean into, call in and live their purpose and uh, thrive in their life like you're doing with your kids now in your life. So congratulations to everything and your success. Thank you, Thank you for coming on the show. We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is Jason Lennox. He's a keynote speaker, a published author, and a strategic consultant in the behavioral healthcare industry. In a space with more companies surviving rather than thriving, Jason works with organizations to create predictability and cash flow and one of the most critical functions of any healthcare provider. His work and mission to improve the industry are rooted in his own personal recovery results following a 12 year battle with addiction that nearly ended his life. His memoir, A Perfect Tragedy, Finding Purpose in Pain, Loss and Addiction is an honest, raw look into the depths of addiction and the heights of recovery. In addition to his professional work, Jason currently serves as the vice president on the board of governors for March, Minnesota's premier professional association for substance use disorder treatment providers, and as the membership director on the board of directors for the National Speakers Association, Minnesota chapter. My goodness, Lennox, uh, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show and for the work that you're doing. It's huge. Yeah, thank you for having me. The, likewise, the work that you're doing to uh, get people on and and um, just highlight some of the work that we get to do is, is fabulous. So thank you. Yeah. And I always, you know, again, our platform, Transformation Talk Radio, the producers, all the people that do everything that so that we can just show up. So uh, in appreciation of all of us doing our parts. Right. So, you know, in, in your bio, it, it it read about you talked about your addiction about how uh your addiction was a, a really it, it could have taken you out would you say it could have taken you out yeah i um had a couple overdoses and many instances where my life nearly ended for sure yeah so when when you're on that road is that would you say that's what you know, getting clean, getting out of addiction, would you say that that is now your purpose? Because you've done a lot of things since then. And um, so would you say that that is what you're passionate about, helping uh, keep others free from addiction or get out of addiction? Yeah, I mean, the reality is my story and my experience and almost not finding help was because it, it was really rooted in stigma and the misunderstanding and the things that societal societally that we talk about the way that we look at and perceive uh, substance use disorder addiction and so i was terrified to share about any of that and so after i've come out on the other side of this 
it is has been a passion of mine and especially as i've spoken to a lot of groups that haven't necessarily had the experience with addiction i realize quickly that people don't misunderstand this disease because they want to they just oftentimes people don't know any different and so then it really that's where my mission turned to how do i just get this out to as many people as possible and help organizations who actually do the work along the way because you know we're losing a quarter million people every year at this point to this disease and it's it's um staggering the 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 increase in the in the um, fatalities uh sometimes you know being a former addict myself sometimes it just takes one time with something and you you become addicted it's it's interesting when it just it can just catch you off guard you didn't think that you would have a problem with something and boom, it catches you. I'm curious as to what your form of addiction you were addicted to. Do you mind sharing that today? Yeah, no, I, it really was anything and everything. Um, I started with drinking some alcohol in junior high, and that didn't really make me feel the greatest as a 12-year-old drinking hard liquor. I don't think that mixes well. I don't think anyone drinking hard liquor mixes all that well, but um, a different topic. And so I slowly started then into marijuana and then to some prescription medications and then cocaine and then methamphetamines, uh, opiates. And it just progressed because I realized that um, mm. as, as I went further and further into those, the pain went away a lot faster because I suffered as a, as a child and, and growing up and through my you know secondary school those years, um, I, I just had a lot of pain going on inside, not physically, um, mentally, emotionally, I just didn't really understand how to operate in this life. So I was attached to just about anything I could get my hands on. Wow. Anything, you know, I, I remember my days as well. For me, it was about, I remember when, when it stopped, but for me, it was about anything to help me keep from feeling the pain. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. That's exactly what so many people who come up against this disease are, are seeking is just something to stop, um, something to just feel a little bit more okay. That's the way I always explained it. I finally felt like I was okay talking to people, uh, going to school, participating in, in things that I just didn't feel good for me. So what so was, did you take us to your darkest place? Yeah, I think, well, the day that I, I woke up and, and began this side of the journey, uh, there were days in my final few years in addiction where I would get behind a wheel and I would be cruising as fast as I could down the highway, just praying to to have the strength to turn or, turn the wheel one time because I just didn't want to wake up and do that. I think the most painful of all, but that was always under the influence of something. So the most painful of all is when I woke up, I had a near fatal overdose that landed me in the hospital on December 8th. I was there for some observation. And then when I went to jail, I woke up there and I was in serious withdrawals. I had lost the solution that I knew the thing that can make me feel better. I had been on the run for a year. So I knew I was in some big trouble and sitting in that jail cell isolated. I did not want to live anymore. And that was the worst experience of my life. Um, just not knowing what was going to happen to me. Yeah. My God, your angels they your guides they must have been working overtime to try to keep you safe to try to prevent you from uh you know from any fatal uh things i i that's how i feel about my life too is that it's it's a miracle that i'm sitting here today uh and i know this and so it's it's amazing when you can live in the miracle and be in the miracle and realize wow you know you were saved from all these possible harms from all the things that that could have possibly happened in this lifetime. So I think it's great that you're doing this work, that you're uh, speaking about it, helping people. You wrote your memoir. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that, that was the product of five, if I count the first two years where I just spun my wheels over an introduction. I got through a page of an introduction and I thought this is this is good, but then I could never go any further. And so first few years, I just didn't really go anywhere. And I spent a couple of years writing a blog, which was really just uh, chronological events throughout my life that, that was the story. And at the end of that, 
um, I, I put that together and had the beginning of a manuscript, I had to modify, essentially rewrite that after I sent it for some editing analysis. Um, and so over a three month period from the summer of 22, the end of the summer, really about the fall until November, um, I, I, I rewrote the thing and launched it uh, December and um, actually my 12 year anniversary in recovery, the book went live. So it was uh, um, just neat how that worked out. But yeah, it really is the, it's the, it is a real and honest look at my journey through some of my worst times. I, I, I didn't, I left some things out obviously, but there are the, the emotion, the intensity, the true feelings and thoughts that go, that go on behind the scenes all are on the pages. And I think that's helped so many people, people that I've gotten feedback from that just, even if they thought they had an understanding of what addiction was, they just didn't realize that um, there was that much and that it was, it was that significant. And it what is it just somebody making a choice. And so, and obviously, you know, there's a recovery side of my story, which is how I've been able to get back into this industry and, and spread the word to many, many people and just dedicate my life to helping people understand that there is a there's a beautiful life to be lived so great uh so what does your life look like today uh in uh you know in self-care in creativity in creating content in in uh in you know not using addiction to cover things up or fill things up but to actually now be fully on your side and to be fully engaged in your life, what does your life look like? Like just today, what does your life look like today? Yeah, I mean, I'm so fortunate. I, I work in a company, an executive team, uh, overseeing some administrative functions. I also have a couple of side businesses. One is a, a recovery housing business where we have two houses here in the metro area of Minnesota. Um, many hundreds of women have gotten to go through there and really have a safe healing space. I also do some consulting in my other business uh, that really supports a lot of organizations delivering treatment. Um, a couple of the volunteer boards that I sit on, but the speaking is really my passion. And, and that creativity comes from getting up at 4 a.m. when the rest of the world is sleeping and just spending two, two to three hours in that peaceful time where I'm really thinking about what's next and how do I just continue to grow my craft, grow myself as a person, I, I, I just, I, I dedicate a lot of time to that. And then I have familial relationships that have been mended and just rebuilt and exploded. I, I literally every day feel like I'm either going somewhere to see someone or getting on the phone. And it's a, it's a tiring thing sometimes, but a fabulous problem to have. So yeah. it's, I have a full life. What a celebration, what a celebration, what a heroic journey that you uh, are living and, you know, good on you for uh, finding your way out, creating your way out and that you are still alive. So uh, let's let the audience know where they can look you up on social media, where they can find out more information about your book. And uh, yeah. Yeah, so I am on LinkedIn. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn building my professional network. I'm also on Facebook, a very public profile, just because I feel like sharing is is what people need. And my website is www.jasonlennox.com. I believe that will be in the in some of the notes, but J-A-S-O-N-L-E-N-N-O-X. And that really has all my social profiles, it has lots of links to my book and the different services that I have and that I offer and um, is really just a, a great way to connect with me something I, I love doing connecting so in my book is on Amazon but again website is kind of a one-stop shop for all the above yeah wow what an incredible journey you've had I mean I am just again uh, I congratulate you. Thank you for doing all this amazing work, Jason. I definitely want to have you come back on where we can have another discussion, uh, further longer discussion. And I will also be making some uh, connections, introductions so that you can speak more and bring that information out. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is going to blow you away. 
Her name is Chris Ashley. She's a coach, an author, and a speaker who has spent the past two decades immersed in the research, spiritual teachings, and practices that she shares. Her book, Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality, has been endorsed by three experts from The Secret, Anita Morjani, and many others in the spiritual personal development space. Chris Ashley, welcome to the show. Hi, Cornelia. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. When we were talking in the green room, I'm totally inspired already with what you shared. So take us to that moment, that moment when everything changed, when you had your spiritual awakening. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I had a spiritual awakening in 2002. And like many people who have had a spiritual awakening or just got to that point where they had to reinvent themselves, right, where, where things had to change, the catalyst for that was my own trauma. So my story was that I was sexually abused by a family member for four years when I was 12 years old, uh, starting when I was 12 years old. And I had this really big, tight-knit, extended Italian family. And when that extended Italian family found out what happened, many of them disowned me. So holidays became divided. You know, my parents and I would take mornings on Christmas and the family of my abuser would take afternoons. I had cousins I was no longer permitted to see. Uh, people in my family were reaching out telling me they didn't love me anymore and I wasn't their family anymore. And as you can imagine, this left me with what I call low vibration emotions like anger and guilt that as a young adolescent, I didn't know how to cope with. You know, most adults don't know how to cope with those types of emotions. And so as a result, I was getting in trouble in school. I was self-harming. I was turning to drugs and I was in a really dark place. And then everything totally changed when someone handed me a book. And what this book did is it changed my way of thinking and being and understanding life and the universe and realizing there's more to this human experience than meets the eye. And I like to say I was like a sleeper agent, right? Something inside of me just woke up. And so when I finished that book, I started reaching for more and I just became insatiable. I was devouring every metaphysical, spiritual, new age, personal development book I could get my hands on. I was trying all these healing modalities. I was finding teachers to study under. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was doing that hard inner work. But to me, I was just unlocking these hidden secrets of the universe, right? That I thought not everyone had access to. So my life really began to change for the better. And then the second part of my story is that as my life began to change, as I was changing my mind to change my reality, my mother began to get a lot worse. So her family had been ripped down the seams and she didn't have those teachers and healing modalities and books that I did. And it started to manifest as physical illness for her. She got cancer, she got hepatitis, she got a lot of really serious illnesses, but also very strange afflictions that her doctors at Northwestern couldn't even explain. And so they gave her pills and then they gave her pills for the side effects of those pills. And she was on a fentanyl patch and and as a, as a result, she slept for all but a few hours of daylight. She would fall down all the time. She would forget conversations we had just the day before. And that lasted almost 15 years. And I had this compounded guilt that I had destroyed my family and broken my mother. But I believe that everything happens for a reason. And I like to say that in the end, I realized it was my mother who was my biggest teacher. Because for every step that I watched her take deeper into depression and illness, I climbed hand over hand in the other direction out of that dark tunnel. Because I was seeing firsthand what happens to a human body and spirit when they go down that path. And then I saw what happened to my own body and spirit as I changed my mind about life and the nature of reality and realized that I had that choice. And I made a promise to myself, and it's a promise I've kept to this day that I would do everything I could to heal physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And to this day, you still will find me reading all the books, finding the teachers to study under because this learning journey never ends. And, and yeah, and I, I became a coach. I wrote a book and now I'm just trying to help other people because I've created the life of my dreams. Uh, I just want to tell you, you are an incredible storyteller. <laughs> Okay. You you really capture the audience. You capture the emotions. You have me at the edge of my seat to where I'm 
really listening to every word that you're saying. So that means a lot. So not only are you all the things, writing a book, all the things that you've done, but you're an incredible speaker that knows how to capture the audience. And now you can add that to your list of amazing uh, gifts and qualities that, that you have. So thank I just, you very much for saying yeah, that. For sure. I just I wanted to let that. you know. So my goodness, what a journey. So how long has your mother, your, I, is, is, did you say your mother passed? She's still alive, actually. Oh, yeah, wow. she's still alive. Um, yeah. And so do you have a relationship with her today? I do. You know, it, it, it's interesting that I started this off saying that it it takes that that moment of realizing, like hitting hitting ground bottom almost for you to change. And she had a moment like that herself. She She took a really bad fall. And this was only like a few years ago, like 2019 or something, she had a really bad fall in the bathroom. She's, she's always covered in bruises, but she went to the hospital and the doctors were basically like, your blood pressure is so high. If you keep doing this, you're going to die. And she did something that I would never, ever, ever recommend anyone do. Don't do this. If you're listening, she went cold Turkey off of everything, which is so dangerous, but, but she had that moment and it's like, she snapped out of a coma. You know, uh, you know, my aunt, I was just talking to my aunt not that long ago. And she said, you know, I had to teach her how to use Amazon. Actually, my mom texted me today and told me she used an ATM today for the first time because she just missed out on, on over a decade worth of life passing her by. Yeah. And a lot of it had probably to do with all the medications that, that she was on with all the various different medications that kept numbing and suppressing and holding it down. And so, and then you have one thing that leads to another and uh, you know, even the people that are at their best uh, you know, in their mastery uh, on their spiritual journey, it takes a lot of courage and consciousness every single day to keep on top of your game and not to be distracted. But when you have pills and medications and illnesses and just all these things, it's hard. So uh, that's totally understandable. But I love what you said that your mother was your greatest teacher. And that is that, you know, it's, it's the people that that uh, are our mirror that we came in here with to learn from, to grow from, and it sounds like it sounds like you have. And so let's let's tell the audience your social media handles, you know, where they can look you up, and let's also tell the audience about your book, where they can find that. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity, and I couldn't agree more with you that everyone we meet is a mirror for us and a reflection of us. Uh, so my social media handle is Change Your Mind with Chris, and Chris is spelled with a K. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. I have a podcast, Change Your Mind with Chris Ashley. And my book is called Change Your Mind to Change Your Reality. And you can get it anywhere you buy your books. It's in paperback, audiobook, ebook, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Google, Apple, everywhere. Thank you for letting me letting me share that. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm so glad that you came on today because again, you know, you you can tell that you're really excited about your journey. You can tell that you're really excited about your life. And who knows what it is that you're going to create. By the way, you look really young too. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know, you, you know, you look like you could be in your late 20s. Um, well, you you're about a decade off, but thank you. <laughs> I'm in my late 30s. Yeah, but probably, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's probably just, you know, your your passion and your light of your, your excitement to uh, build and co-create and use the gifts that you came here to live. And again, explore the nature of spirituality. And, and we are so much more than we we were led to believe, right? Exactly. And, and that's that's what we're here to do, to remember the truth of who it is that we are. Magnificent, amazing beings of, uh, you know, incredible gifts to bring here and co-create our new earth together. So it's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you so much for being thank here. So much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want to thank you, audience. Thank you for listening and tuning in. And we'll see you again next Friday. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Take care. You've been listening to The Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.